Hey, how you doing? Come on in. Hey, uh, good to see you too. Tumbleweed here, you know, the good guy with the black hat. Well, welcome to Tumbleweed Talks. I invite you to partake in my musings, ranging from uh, meaning in life to our relationship with God and how we rise above everyday occurrences. This video is the first of a series on faith and business. Today we're going to talk about wise servant leadership. Well, I recently uh, had cause to discuss servant leadership with a large group of men. It is a concept that some of us in life and the business world struggle to fully grasp, especially as we find ourselves in a culture where charisma and self-promotion are held in fairly high esteem. Humility is not usually what we think of first when we're thrust into or aspire to a leadership role. Leadership can take many forms. It is the process of influencing individuals and groups to set and achieve goals. Pretty simple. Whatever form, you'll invariably find that you need to lead by example. That can be good or bad. Your leadership must generate trust from those who follow you. You may find yourself struggling with giving deserved credit to others for group accomplishments and taking the blame when things go wrong. That can be tough. We often find ourselves struggling to be selfless without seeming weak. Yet Christ assures us that greater good will come of a humble spirit. As in Matthew 1, 11, 28, 29, he says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourselves. Hmm, good wisdom. In his best-selling book, Good to Great, author Jim Collins identifies personal characteristics common to the CEOs of the companies he identified from his research as having sustained outstanding performance. He called these executives level five executives and noted that such a leader builds enduring greatness through a paradoxical blend of personal humility and professional will. These are not executives that you see dominating the news with their bigger-than-life charismatic flourishes. Sustained great performance is not the bag of the self-promoter or their roller coaster track records that often bear testimony. My point is that the very best leaders need to be confident, competent, and humble in life as well as in business. Arguably, the role model each of us should follow throughout our lives, the true servant leader is Jesus Christ. Virtually everything ascribed to Christ in the Bible optimizes servant leadership. So, whether you are self-employed or an employee, you will find that exercising the principles of servant leadership and the characteristics of the Level 5 executive will pay off in myriad of ways with customers, associates, partners, networks, employees, and bosses. Think on Matthew 18, 4. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child this one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Wise words. Do you find yourself challenged in embodying a humble spirit as you lead? It's tough. Think on, with me are riches and honor, lasting wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than solid gold and my heart is harvest than pure silver. Wisdom, wisdomic words. Management scientists have identified more than 600 terms associated with desirable leadership characteristics. It might easily leave one to wonder why it is so difficult to find great leaders. Terms like visionary, confident, optimist, listener, aspiring, and hundreds more combine in various patterns to describe the ultimate leader. On the flip side, there are undesirable traits such as braggart, narcissist, egocentrism, tunnel vision, and mendacious, that means lie for those unfamiliar with that term, among dozens of terms. Okay, so what? What is the servant leadership so important? Tumbleweed and many folks believe that there's a biblical basis of servant leadership as exemplified by Christ. No one could for a moment doubt his servant nature or his consistent teaching of service, humility, morality, self-awareness, confidence, communication, and more. The legacy of his leadership is that his message has endured more than 2,000 years and attracted millions of followers. It's just one of the proofs of his servant leadership. Why is it important? Author Jim Collins made an exhaustive study of what constituted great businesses. 
He found that companies that continuously outperform their competitors by orders of magnitude results over 15 or more years were what he called the level five executives. Now, by to review, these are executives that had that paradoxical blend of competence, confidence, and humility that I spoke to earlier. They gave credit for success to others and took blame for failure on themselves. Tough to do. They are strong leaders by any measure. The Chinese sage Shuo Tzu in the 5th century BC remarked, The sage never strives himself for the great, and thereby the great is achieved. So some may fear that such a person might be seen as weak. Weak? Huh. Well, I contend that it takes a far greater strength to be a servant leader. While there are certainly wealthy business people out there today as measured in material riches, I contend that many are far from happy in their lives and have experienced major failures along with successes by virtue of their egocentric, all-about-me natures. The proven measure of sustained success is really through servant leadership. Really think about it. Do you get it? Just saying.